All right, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Japan, metal, cars, and everything else. Today, it's time to answer some more questions. How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We've got some new questions for you today. Now here in Japan we've got a lot of stuff going on, although we've had a strange winter. It's been a little bit warm and rainy, which I don't really like in winter. I really like to have a lot of snow. That's all right. Hopefully I'll get to go skiing sometime. Let me know what the weather's like in the winter in your country right now down below. But anyways, let's get right on to the first question. So what is my favorite Japanese car? Well, since I've moved to Japan, there's been a lot of cars that I've seen that don't exist in other countries or that were very rare in other countries. There's obviously the Nissan Skyline R34 GTR. This car was made famous by video games like Gran Turismo, by movies. It's really an awesome car and I never got to see one in person until I moved here. And now I really see them all over the place and it's just awesome every time. And as much as I love that car though, I can't say it's my favorite. My favorite's gotta be something like my car. Actually, I really love my car. I drive a Toyota GT86 and I love it to death. It is one of the most fun cars I've ever driven. The driving feel of that thing is just unmatched in any car I've ever been in. So I can enjoy driving that car and have a smile on my face driving it pretty much anywhere I go, especially in all the mountain roads that are around here. It's just awesome and exciting always. Now, if you missed my video about it, or if you want to see the video, it's right above. Next, there's another car that exists only in Japan. One of those mini K cars. These things are really small, but there's a special one that I love. And I actually owned one of these before I got my 86. And that's a Suzuki Alto works. Now these little miniature cars, they only seat four people. They've got minimal storage unless you fold down the rear seats and they only have 64 horsepower. That's the max. They're peaked at 64 horsepower. These are just government regulations to try to keep them inexpensive and keep them fuel efficient, which they get over 50 miles to the gallon. It's pretty awesome. Now the Suzuki Alto works is a little bit different than a normal little family K car because it has a sport tuned suspension system. It has Recaro sport seats in it to really give you that sporty feel. Now, again, it's still only 64 horsepower in a tiny little car, but it weighs nothing. They're just a blast to drive and I absolutely love them. And you can only really see that kind of car here in Japan. So those are probably my two favorite cars that I've got. So the next question, So, how can you level up your guitar playing? Well, me, I've always really been a rhythm player. I've never been that much of a soloist. I don't know, it's something that I could never get behind. That's mostly because I always really focused on playing my own stuff. I really didn't try to learn enough of other bands' musics, which means I never learned a lot of different techniques. And that kind of stunted my playing. But recently I decided to change that and level up my own guitar playing. What I decided to do is play something quite out of my league. A dime bag Daryl guitar solo. So I covered Cemetery Gates by Pantera. You can see that video linked above here. Now that video I would say is probably the sloppiest Cemetery Gates guitar cover ever. But that's okay. Again, I learned a lot of new techniques and really was able to improve my playing well above what it used to be just from trying to play something a little bit higher than what I can actually play. I've been playing rhythm and I really want to get into soloing more. My solos that I wrote before were um, garbage, but that's okay. 
So how can you level up your playing? Take what you can play today and just try to play something that you think is difficult. Try to play something a level above where you're at right now. Try to learn some new techniques by learning solos that you couldn't play before or learning stuff from different bands and different guitarists that you're not used to playing. And you'll be able to pick up techniques that you can integrate into your own playing. Level up. All right, so the question I keep getting over and over is why Japan? You know, why did I choose Japan? What's cool about Japan? All this kind of thing. So let's delve a little bit more into that with a few small details that will show you one piece of what I love about Japan. So I live in Nara. And in Nara, from the beginning of the year to the end of February, there's a bunch of festivals. At the end of January, we have this really cool thing where they um, set a mountain on fire. Yes, they burn a mountain. It's called Yamayaki, which literally means like cooking a mountain. Uh, the mountain that's behind the Nara Deer Park, there's a clearing on it that has no trees and they set it on fire. It looks awesome. This is just freaking cool. I mean, how many places can you go where they decide to just light mountains on fire? Now, it's got a cool tradition behind it. It's about scaring away demons and bad spirits. But today, it's more just about it looks awesome. Then, at the beginning of February, which is this video you see playing on this monitor up here, they have Setsubun Festival. Now, Setsubun is all over Japan. It's about driving away bad spirits also. And people do things like they throw beans from temples or out of their house to scare the demons away. You also eat the same number of beans as your age. So if you're like 30 years old, you eat 30 beans. But in Nara, we have a famous temple called Kasuga Taisha. And Kasuga Taisha has these ancient stone lanterns leading the way up to the temple. Two times per year, they light all of them in August and around Setsubu. Now, it's a really dark road up to the temple, but being lit with these candle-lit stone lanterns is just really cool. So it looks awesome. And when you get up to the actual temple, it's all lit up. It's got a whole bunch of different ones of these lanterns, like hundreds of them. And inside the actual temple grounds, the walkway around it is lit up with these kind of handmade little lanterns that have been donated. Really freaking awesome. I mean, that's cool. So we've got a burning mountain. We've got this big lantern festival at a temple. And then it doesn't end. Now in the middle of February, just after Setsubun, for a week until Valentine's Day. So starting a week before Valentine's Day, they have Nara Rurie. What this is, is they light up part of Nara Park to look like the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, it's like blue lights everywhere. They actually have lit up deer because it's famous for Nara deer. Then they even have these stars, little lights that look like stars hanging from the trees to give you that starlight romantic experience before Valentine's Day. These are three festivals spread out along a short time from the beginning of the year just in Nara City. Now there's many more festivals in the surrounding areas, but this is one of the things I really love about Japan. Anywhere you go, any of the different prefectures, any of the different cities, you can go to and there's festivals going on for something at some point in time that you can enjoy, that brings the whole community together and you can really see what the culture's like. I absolutely love that. So again, thanks for joining me here, answering your questions. If you like this video, do not forget to turn that thumbs up button blue because the YouTube algorithm absolutely loves blue thumbs up buttons. And subscribe to stay up to date on content. Come join the adventure with me in Japan. Share this video with your friends and I'll see you next time.